Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this invited section lecture, set of lectures. Um, this is the set of lectures that are associated with two of the sections for the IMU, section 15, that discusses numerical analysis and scientific computing, as well as section 17, mathematics and science and technology. My name is Catherine Roberts. I'm the executive director of the American Mathematical Society and I'm delighted to chair this session, um, particularly since many of the topics discussed today are in my own area of research interests. We have four speakers this afternoon. Each talk is scheduled for 45 minutes and then there's 15 minutes for discussion and questions following the lecture. We have, we'll have a, a um, woman here helping us with a microphone, so when you do have questions, please wait until the microphone comes to you so that we'll be sure to capture the questions in our video recording and everyone will be able to listen and hear the questions clearly. Um, are there any questions before we get started? Okay, well I hope this can be a very friendly and uh, interesting opportunity for us to listen to some fascinating mathematics and ask some good questions. We're going to begin our first lecture, 15.1, with Dr. Manuel Castro. He's standing here beside me. He is from the University of Malaga in Spain in the Department of Applied Mathematics where he works in, in a group called E-D-A-N-Y-A. -A. Do you say it, Edania? Edania Group, this is a group of, of researchers focused on differential equations, numerical analysis, and its applications. His PhD is in Applied Mathematics from the University of Malaga as well. He did this with uh, Pirano and uh, Madronal. And um, Professor Castro works in numerical analysis of balance laws and non-conservative hyperbolic systems. The title of Manuel Castro's talk is a review on high order, well-balanced, path conservative, finite volume schemes for geophysical flows. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone. First of all, though, uh, I want to, to thank, uh, you know, the scientific and uh, organizing committee to give me the opportunity to be this afternoon with, with you, sharing what uh, I, we have done in our group, in the Dania group, led by Carlos Pérez, concerning the numerical approximations of uh, hyperbolic non-conservative uh, systems. So, it's not uh, a talk about uh, something new, it's more focused on a review of what we have done in the last 15 years concerning the numerical analysis of these kind of systems and uh, the application to, to, to real worlds and in particular to, to your physical uh, uh, flows. So let's start with a motivating example and in fact it's the last one where we have been involved in, in our group so what you see there is a movie from the uh, uh, Stromboli Island. What you see there is a landslide of rocks that comes into the water and generates small tsunamis. This is a small event, but in fact we are focusing a bigger one, the one that taken into, into account in 2002. In that case, after a long period of activity, the uh, Schiara del Foco collapsed in small pieces and generates two tsunamis. One of them is middle uh, scale and the other, okay, it's not too big, but generate, as you will see in a moment, big waves, um, uh, chief and maximum run up of 10 meters. What you see here is not a simulation, it's the data that people there takes after the, the event. So for example, what you see here is that depending on the authors, you look at the literature, they measure or they try to establish what are the, the inundation area, the inundated area, okay? So typically, this is the, the kind of thing that you could uh, expect, expect. So even if this is a well-known uh, problem and a well-known uh, area, you look for real data and you have uncertainties. Uncertainty on measures, but also uncertainties on the initial conditions and also in models. So the first part of the project, that project that was involved by Italian authorities was, okay, 
try to establish a tsunami early warning system that could help to, to give information about the type of tsunami generates in that island. So in this uh, Stromboli island that is located in the Aeolian, uh, is part of the Aeolian island in the Tyrrhenian Sea, in the Mediterranean, as you see here in these yellow points, are the, the places where this wave uh, arrives. So even this is, uh, I would say, a medium scale for, let's say, a typical geophysical flow, we have a big domain. So we want to simulate this kind of problems in domains with, you know, a huge uh, amplitude. It's not a laboratory test case, it's, you know, a real world problem. And in geophysical flows, we deal with Tyrrhenian Sea, Mediterranean, or even the Pacific or Atlantic Ocean in the whole, okay? So big domains. So first thing is establish what kind of model we could use. So simple models in geophysical flows concern mainly the approximation of long waves, so typically shallow water flows. There, after a sun Asymptotical analysis from the navier stokes equation, we array a very simple model, uh, the standard shallow water system. So, for example, for this problem, we could try with a very simple model, you will see in a moment, it's a two layer model, couple the two phases, the water and the granular part. So, in these two cases, we are going to have a two layer couple system of shallow water uh, models. But this model, okay, they are, with this model we are able to reproduce inundation, but the shape of the waves are not well captured, so we need to increase the complexity of the, of the physics, and then we need to, to, to include more physics in the model. So, for example, taking into account non hydrostatic effects. But nevertheless, the structure of the problems looks quite similar in both cases. So we in this first part of the, the talk, I'm going to, to consider the simple model and try to, to show you what is the type of model we use, what is the type of system that appears, and then how pneumatics deals with that, okay? So this is, the, as I said to you, the simple model that we could uh, use. So it's a two-layer shallow water system. So for the first layer, we have, uh, you know, the standard shallow water system where H1 is the water depth, the discharge. This is the, the equation for the conservation of mass, momentum. Here, these terms that are new when you couple these two, two, two models are taking into account the pressure between the, the interaction of pressure between these, these two. And you will see that these kind of terms introduce serious difficulties from the mathematical and also from the numerical point of view. Here, we have also the a geometrical source term taking into account the variation of the topography and then friction terms that are critical in order to control the, the dynamic of, of the line slide, okay? So for example, for the granular part, we use here a very simple uh, friction law that is the Coulomb friction law that takes into account the stopping criteria for the motion of the line slide. And this friction law depends on one parameter that is static angle that depends on the material, okay? So, this is the, the type of model, the simple model that you could try to use to, to model this, this kind of problem. And here there are some references where you could uh, find the, the derivation of, of the primal Sabahuter model and then what we propose for this couple model. So this model could be written in a general way where the small uh, w correspond to the conserved variables. The, those are the physical flags. So this term comes from the non-conservative term, so the coupling term from pressure, and the geometrical source term. Here, you could add also more terms, like friction terms. So if those terms, here for example, those terms, you, you don't have a derivative, but you could put, for example, the derivative of the identity, and then you could write in the same way. So at the end, at the end, this problem could be written in such a way, okay? So in the source term, we could add in an artificial way a derivative. So we prefer, instead of considering the formulation of the problem in, in that way, we prefer to write in a more compact way, like a first-order quasi-linear uh, system, 
where this capital A is the, uh, you know, is the matrix that comes from the transform matrix, so the Jacobian plus the, uh, the non-conservative term together with the source term. And we add an extra uh, lines of zero taking into account that the, the, the H, the artificial unknown, that is a given function, do not change on, on time, okay? So we suppose that for our purpose, this system is strictly hyperbolic. For example, in the, the, the system that we consider at the very beginning is not always strictly hyperbolic, it's conditionally hyperbolic. But in fact, you could think that, in fact, the region of hyperbolicity gives you the range of applicability of the previous model, okay? So let's concentrate in models that could be seen that are models that are strictly hyperbolic and non-conservative. So, we all know that even if we start with smooth initial data, hyperbolic uh, uh, problems takes to, to evolve this data producing singularities, discontinuities. So the main problem that appears from the mathematical point of view is that this product has no sense in the distributional framework if W is discontinuous. So the first thing is, okay, what is the concept of which solution for that problem? And we follow the framework developed by Dalma, Sole, Flock, Murat. So for us, for them, what is a weak solution? So these weak solutions are going to be defined in terms of a mathematical artifact, path. So we need to, 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 to establish a, a family of paths, so family that is defined on the, uh, on the space states that connects to states uh, to this continuous state. So, in fact, what is a, a weak solution? It's nothing more than a classical solution where it's smooth and across this continuity, they should satisfy this generalized ranking or not condition. Note that if A is a Jacobian, that is not the case here, here you could write in a simple way by a difference of flux and you recover the standard ranking or not condition. But here we don't have a flux, so it's a way to, 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 to extend the, the notion of of uh, ranking on a condition. But note that, you know, sigma, that is the speed of propagation of the shock and the two state are quite related with this path. So when you fix the path, in fact, you are fixing the propagation of shocks and also the amplitude of them. So this path, that from the mathematical point of view, could be any smooth path in the space of state should be connected with physics. And again, here, as in the conservation laws, we need to fix an entropy pair in order to pick up also the, the physical uh, uh, solutions. Now, what is a good choice for paths? So it's clear that if my problem comes from physics, those paths should be related to, to that. So think, for example, that in our problem, we do some asymptotical analysis, we have neglected the small scales, and we arrive to a hyperbolic problem. Here, we need to come back. So take into account the small scale that we have neglected when we formulate the, the system. And in fact, we think that our hyperbolic system is nothing more than the viscose limit of uh, the vanishing viscosity limit of this parabolic uh, problem. And now we look for the viscous profile for that. So it's standard. So a viscous profile is nothing more than a traveling wave satisfying these boundary conditions. And then when you take to, to the limit, if this sigma speed is uh, defined, then we, uh, we have an admissible shock. Okay? And now, okay. What are the differential equations satisfied by this, cause, the, this viscous profile? Uh, that. And in you integrate and considering the, the, uh, the uh, boundary conditions, the condition at the, at the infinite, then what you, what you obtain is that expression that in fact is similar to that. In fact, what you see is that the path should be a reparameterization of viscous profiles. But a critical part here is that viscous profiles 
depends on the regularization. It's not that the case of standard conservation laws. Here, each time you change this second order term, you change the viscose profile. And this is the key part, okay? And this is the key part for the difficulty uh, doing numerics, as you will see. Now, okay, what happened if you cannot compute your viscose profiles? Because perhaps it's too difficult. You could try to approximate them by a simple family of paths. Take segment, for example. What happens if you take segment? So it's clear that you cannot recover the physical relevant solution because you have changed the viscous profile. Now the, your viscous profile are related to this segment path. But in fact, well, there are some lines missing in the, you know, in the, in the slide. I don't know why. And what I, here I was, we said is that segment path gives you a third order approximation of ranking one your uh, conditions. So in fact, it's not too bad to use this family of segment. You are dealing with problem with small or moderate shocks. But then, you must be careful on that. So depending on the problem, that could be critical. And in fact, the, this choice, segment path, could be terrible. You could be far away from the correct solution. So depending on the problem, this could be a good choice, or maybe you are completely far away. So depending, you, you need to analyze what is the distance, the true distance, with respect to the ranking, the true ranking order condition. Now, suppose that you have a non-conservative system. Suppose that you have established, from the mathematical point of view, or from the physical one, that is what you expect, what are the viscous profiles or the path, the path that you need to, to use. Next thing to do is, OK, we want to approximate the solution of this system. And we want to define numerical schemes that, in some sense, mimic and take the, uh, you know, the use of this viscous profile and plugging into the numerical scheme. As I said to you, our problems are going to, to develop discontinuities, so a standard framework for approximate this kind of solution, the five volumes approximation, or you could use also DG. All what I'm going to say for five volume solution could be deal for, for DG approximation. So in five volumes approximations, we evolve cell average, so let's consider a uniform grid for simplicity, and then I will denote by WIT the cell average of my exact solution at time t, and I'm going to, to use the method of the line, so I consider my problem continuous in time and I discretize. So at, I have piecewise constant solution, I integrate, and my solver is going to be defined in terms of the solution, exact or approximated, of Riemann problem at the intercells. So at the end, my scheme is going to be defined in terms of three states, middle, left, and right state. OK. Now, the numerical scheme that we propose is what we call a path conservative scheme. It's nothing more than a numerical scheme that is formally consistent with our choice of paths. Okay? So what is a path conservative scheme? So a scheme that could be written in, that, in such a way that satisfy this D minus and D plus that we call that fluctuations, satisfy these two properties. So if the two state at the left and right of a Riemann problem are equal, fluctuation are zero, as across a discontinuity, D minus and D plus, the sum of these two give you the direct mass of my measure. Because in fact, this non-conservative product could be understood at a Borel measures, and this is nothing more than a direct mass. So, Path conservative scheme is nothing more than a scheme that split Dirac masses. It's nothing more than that. Okay? Now, using this framework, we and collaborators 
has been standing the majority, or well, not all of them, but a lot of well-known solvers. So, for example, Godunov solver in the framework of non-conservative system, road solver, simple approximate to Riemann solvers, entropy preserving, either Roche, central skin, WAP, DG, and propose new ones. So this framework allows in a natural way to extend and to redefine the solvers that people typically use in the conservation laws to this case, to the case of uh, non-conservative system. And now, the key question, do they converge or not? So we need to prove or we need to show in some sense that we are, for this scheme, we are able to prove a last winter theorem. So what happened if we consider a non-conservative scheme and we approximate using a path conservative one? So in fact, in that paper, collaboration with Leflock, we proved the, the following thing. So if our numerical solution have bounded total variation and if they converge to W, a function, uniformly in the sense of graph, then W respect the ranking one your condition. So we are able to recover the, our concept of which solution. But this conversion, this sense of conversion is too strong. In fact, the majority of the numerical scheme that I have shown do not satisfy this way of convergence. So in fact, for standard numerical scheme, so a scheme that we are able to prove that converts almost everyone, what we have is the following, that in fact W is not the solution of our original problem, but a perturbed problem. So you say, oh, it's not too bad. It's a numerical scheme, it's not too bad. Well, you cannot decrease in such a way the error because the error are concentrated at the discontinuities. So it's not a matter of really refining your grid and you decrease the error. It's not the, it's not the case, okay? You cannot do that. You cannot expect to do that. So, okay, what happened? Okay, what happened in fact is the following. As I said to you at the very beginning, Every time you change the second order operator, the, the, the parabolic part of your, of your regularization, then you change your viscous profile. The majority of our numerical scheme introduce, introduce numerical viscosity. So that means that even if you take your path, then your numerical scheme that introduces some numerical viscosity will perturb the viscous profile that you have selected and changed. So every numerical scheme has their own ranking on your locus, okay? And this is the, the, critical, the critical part. So this is something that is particular for path conservative scheme and the answer is no. In fact, it's a common difficulty for every numerical scheme that introduce numerical diffusion when you deal with non-conservative systems. So how we could overcome this thing? Okay, there are several ways to do that. And here I have put several recent uh, publications in that way. So the, the way is all consider a free viscosity method. So bling, front tracking, but they are difficult because for those you need to, 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 to know quite well the, the structure of your Riemann problem, and perhaps it's too difficult. Try to control the equivalent equation. In fact, this idea is not new. There are plenty of papers that people try to, to, to deal with non-conservative formulation of conservative system, play with the equivalent equation to formulate schemes that are simple to code, but com that try to converge to, to the correct weak solution. So this is, let's say, it's not new. But in any case, what you need to, to do is to control the numerical viscosity and the entropy production of your scheme. And there are several ways to do that, okay? So there are ways to pr produce numerical scheme, difficult, maybe they are technical, but there are ways to do that and to improve the convergence. 
And in some cases, you do not observe this error. This is, for example, the case of balance loss. If you have a smooth balance loss, there is no problem at all. You could prove, in fact, that you have convergence. And the other thing that I put here is that if your non-conservative uh, products are related to contact discontinuities, you do not observe, or at least we haven't observed, this problem of convergence, okay, from the numerical uh, simulation. We haven't any formal proof of that, but we haven't observed any error from the numerical point of view. So that gives an idea that should be a, a good uh, result in that direction, but we haven't proved that, okay? So, okay, first word of my talk, path conservative scheme. Second word, well balancing. So, what about well balancing? So, well balancing is related to the ability of our numerical scheme to reproduce in a proper way stationary solutions. What means proper way? Means accurately, more accurately than a standard solution. So, in fact, what I say here is that I want to define numerical schemes that exactly recover the stationary solution. And I say exactly with the error machine. So this is the, the task, okay? Maybe it's a difficult problem, so depending how difficult is uh, the characterization of this stationary solution. But in fact, this is something that, for example, in the shallow water system could be done in a very simple case, where, for example, you consider water at rest. And this is first introduced by Bermudez and Batker, and they, they call that C property. What happens if your numerical skin is not well balanced? For, for example, for the shallow water system. Suppose that you have a lake, so this is the bathymetry, and you consider a very simple solution that is u equals zero and flat free surface, so water at rest. If you have a well-balanced skin, what you recover is zero velocity, and your free surface maintains unchanged for long time integration. If your numerical skin is not well-balanced, what you create is a numerical storm. What happens if your bathymetry is smooth? Okay, you refine, you consider a higher order method, and then you reduce these oscillations. But perhaps it's too costly. So the good thing from well balancing, if your problem is smooth, is that, or even not smooth, is that you don't need very fine grids in order to simulate small perturbation around equilibria, because all the errors related to the approximation of the stationary solution have been clean on your numerical scheme. So in fact, the numerical discretization should be consistent with the amplitude of the perturbation you want to, to, to simulate, and not really the, 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 the size of the total solution. And this is the good news for the well-balancing. Okay, so this is a more, let's say, precise definition of my concept of wet balancing. So in fact, when I write my numerical scheme in that way, what I want to, to, to do or to have is numerical schemes such as if I consider any stationary solution, then my numerical scheme, the, the, the uh, vector on noun W should be a critical point of my ordinary differential equation. It's what I want to do. So, in fact, what I'm saying is that my numerical scheme, if I start with a stationary solution, maintains that unchanged, imperturbed, okay? This is my definition. And what is the connection with the stationary solution and path conservative scheme? The connection is quite clear at least for us. So given any stationary solution, suppose that you are able to define paths such as when you have two states that belongs to this stationary solution, then the path is nothing more than a reparameterization of this piece of stationary solution. Then we could prove that there are infinitely many path conservative methods that are well balanced. Not one, not two. 
infinitely many. So how you define that kind of path? This is quite technical, and I'm going, I'm not, I don't go to, to show you today, but we also prove that there are ways to do that. So in principle, from the abstract point of view, it is always possible for 1D problems to do this in a general way. Perhaps it's delicate, complicated. The algorithm could be difficult to implement, but we could do that in principle. Okay, some comments about well balancing. The first one is what I said. It's those skin are super if you want to, to simulate small perturbation around the equilibria. They also go, do a very good job for long time integration, around, again, around equilibria. And this is even more. If you have non smooth stationary solutions, for example, you have singular source term, then well balancing is mandatory. If not, what you observe here is that this is a non-smooth stationary solution for the Burger equation with a singular source term. And then here, what you do is standard non-well-balanced scheme. You consider high order scheme, you refine, and you go to another solution. So you are far away from that, okay? Now, so well-balancing, high order. So what do we do, okay? So in, in the framework of uh, five volume scheme, high order scheme, uh, the combination, you obtain that by a combination of a first order numerical flux and a Ricoh-Stasson operator. So it's a Ricoh-Stasson operator is a smooth function that approximates the solution at every, at every cell. And for that, you, you need to combine the cell average. And okay, in the literature, there are a huge literature on, on that providing you different techniques for, for doing that. Okay, so this is the form of a high order uh, five volume solver in the conservative way. So here we have a numerical flux and here we plug in the reconstruction at the intersects. But we cannot use this formulation, we haven't any flux at all. So what we, could we do, okay. We add and subtract the physical flux using the reconstruction inside the cell. And then we reorder those terms. Yeah? And then we use the Barrow rule. And then the chain rule. So at the end, I arrive to that numerical scheme that is equivalent to that. Of course, it's not the way of writing a good high order numerical scheme for conservation laws, but this scheme helps to understand what should be the scheme for non-conservative system. So in a non-conservative system, what we have is the following. Here we have the matrix A, and here we have the uh, fluctuations. But in fact, I have derived this by simply manipulating the uh, high order conservative system. But in fact, Looking carefully, what is the definition of the non-conservative product? This also gives you the good interpretation of that because it, it, when you have a non-conservative product, the interpretation of that is a Borel measure. So you have a Borel measure, you have a regular part, and for that we use the, our reconstruction. And for the singular part, the direct masses, we do the fluctuation. So in fact, that mimic that our non-conservative product is nothing more than a Borel measure. So it's another way to, of, of thinking on that, okay? So this is our uh, proposed for a high order, non-conservative uh, numerical scheme. Now, what about the combination of well balancing and high order? For that, we need another definition. So we need to, to improve our reconstruction operators. So our definition is concerning how we define high order uh, reconstruction operators. So for me, a high order reconstruction operators is nothing more than a reconstruction operator that do nothing and we recover 
the exact stationary resolution where we, uh, we start with, okay? So in some sense, stationary resolution are invariant, should be invariant by my reconstruction operator. So it's simple to prove that if you have both uh, first order pass conservative scheme that is well balanced together with this reconstruction operator, then the combination of those give you a high order, well balanced numerical scheme. But reconstruction operators are based on interpolation theory or approximation theory. And typically, the majority of them are defined in terms of polynomials. And our stationary solutions are far away in general to be polynomials. So, how we could construct to define a high order, well balanced reconstruction operator? So, this is something that we have done 10 years ago inside of a paper that concerned with another thing, but I think the, the good idea in that paper is not what we described, no, it's not the numerical scheme, it's that, that procedure. And in fact, the idea is simple to, to say. Okay, suppose that you have your cell average. First step, try to find a stationary solution for the set you want to, to preserve that have this property. So the integral over the cell of the stationary solution should be W1. It could be difficult. But if you do that, then it's simple. You compute the fluctuation with respect to, to this. You apply a standard reconstruction operator for the fluctuation. And then there is something here that you don't see, but I say to you. Now you combine the stationary solution together with the high order reconstruction operator with the fluctuation. So the sum up of this thing gives you a high order, well balanced reconstruction operator. So this is the way of doing that, a way of doing that. Of course, this step could be difficult, depending on the differential equation you have, you know, uh, uh, for the definition of stationary solution. And now we move to numerical results. So this is toy problem. Here I said toy problem, but you don't see. So we have the Burger equation with a non-linear source term that are also non-smooth. So we have a jump here on this, okay? So it's simple to compute here the stationary solution. It's nothing more than two pieces of exponential. And here the jump should be related to the, to the jump of H, okay? It's something it's a simple computation that any of our students could do, could do. And now, okay, we apply to that stationary solution our high order numerical scheme. You say high order, it is discontinuous, okay. But then I'm going to plug in here a small perturbation and I want to approximate in the smooth areas, I want to approximate this perturbation in a high order way, okay. So even if your stationary solution is discontinuous, you could think to apply a high order reconstruction operator that preserves that, okay? What happened? So this, in fact, this is the example that I showed you before. But in fact, here I show you two examples. This picture and that one that correspond to the following. So if you are not familiar with well balancing, okay, you arrive to that, say, okay, here I have the derivative of H, here I put V square, what I put at the interfaces. So why not consider a average of U square times jump of H? Why not? If it's smooth, it's consistent. And I found that. What happened if instead of taking the cell average of U square, I first do average and then the square? It's also another consistent way if my source then is smooth. And I arrive to another solution. So it's a typical problem where you have singularities on the source then that depending the way you regularize your source then, you obtain very difficult, very different, sorry, uh, numerical results. And now I said to you, now I'm going to plug in here a small perturbation. And here, I don't know if you see that. This is blue, green, red and black. Black is the reference solution, blue is first order, second, third order. 
What is nice with a well-balancing skin is only focus on that, the propagation of the perturbation. But the contact discontinuity and this part is unchanged. Then the perturbation goes up, to do a beta job, of course, and then after a long time, even if your first order has you know, a lot of diffusion, first, second, third order, all of them are able to recover the stationary solution because this stationary solution is stable. Okay, so you are able to recover that. So this is a typical problem where well balancing helps you to simulate this small perturbation. And now I have a few minutes. Let's move to real world application. So I start with a very, very, very simple model that is a two layer shallow water system. Now, okay, we have used that model, try to reproduce the waves, the inundation for that problem, for laboratory experiments. Inundation maps are not too bad, but the shape of the waves are completely wrong, of course. We are using a hydrostatic approximation. And in that kind of problem, we need to, to propagate solitons. Shallow water has not solitons. So we need to improve our model, the physics of the model. So what we have done, if to consider a more complex model, it's a non-hydrostatic model, multi-layer model. So here we, you see the conservation of This is for phase one, for fluid, okay? For the fluid part, not for the granular part. Here what you see is more or less the, the part standard for the shallow water system. Here you don't see that, but here there are derivatives inside because it's the momentum transfer between the, that is related to the mass transfer. This is the equation for the vertical velocity, and then you have an extra equation for the incompressibility. And now we combine the technology that we have developed, so path conservative, high order numerical scheme, well balanced, and here, in order to impose this condition, we use, for example, the shorting projection algorithm. There are other ways to do that, but for that test case, we do that. So it's a combination of a high order five volume solver with a five different uh, uh, solver together with a projection technique. Okay. Uh, and here is a HPC, high performance computing. So we have big computational domains and I, I said to you, Mediterranean, Pacific Ocean, so in order to, to simulate this problem, those problems in an efficient way, we move to domain decomposition. So standard domain decomposition technique has been applied. Then new architectures appear, GPUs, Intel, so on. So those architectures offer us new facilities to implement and to do parallelism. Why don't you do that? And in fact, we do that. We move to multi-GPU coding using CUDA, MPI, OpenACC, or MPI. Yeah, there is a reference for a review of the things that we have done. We need to define new load balancing algorithm that deals with heterogeneous machines, also problems, because we need we need to, to simulate inundation maps. So that means that our domain changes with time. So we need to re-equilibrate uh, certain several times. We do sometimes automatic merge refinement, in GPUs, moving meshes. This is a recent work with uh, Michael Damser. So we combine our numerical scheme with the new capabilities of the new architecture and try to implement very efficient solvers. And now it's time to validation. So we have a model. We have people coming from physics, from geophysics. We could show them our theorems, our numerical scheme, but the only way to convince them is to benchmark against numerical experiment that had been done in laboratory. So it's what we do. So here, for example, is a problem that is the, the simulation of the impact wave of a hypothetical city in the USA. This is a laboratory experiment. So you have a soliton that is approximating, then you are going to see breaking, swelling, and the impact with the buildings, all that put in the, in the mesh. Okay. 
So this is this, the representation of our, uh, of the laboratory experiment that we have performed using this multi-layer model. Here, we only need one layer to, to simulate that. Now, here we have in a street of the, of the domain, we have several gauges, and this is, for example, on uh, blue, this is the data, and on red, uh, our uh, model. Uh, we capture quite well the arrival time, the maximum amplitude, so it's not too bad. Another example, this is more sophisticated. Here yeah, we have a pool, and sliding mass. It's moving rapidly in the slope and creating, you know, waves. So it's a solid body, long slide motion, and the generation of tsunamis. Again, here we compare, we compare non-hydrostatic with hydrostatic. The shape of the waves are completely different. You don't see that. And here, the, the, the data is in red and in blue, what we obtain with this model. This is the same thing for a granular material, so closer to the model that we want to, to, to do. So, yeah. so here we have a pool, here we have a granular material done, and then here we have some control point to, to check out the, uh, the time series. So this is the movie. So you, you're going to see that the line slide is going to stop. And then you have this long wave motion, and this is the comparison with the laboratory data. And finally, this is the first, our first simulation with the Stromboli Island. I don't know if you see here, you have the line slide moving down. So the initial shape and the volume has been done for people of INGV in Italy. And here, we compare with one of the lines and it's not too bad, but I said to you, okay, this is one single realization. Okay, we play with the parameters of our model, but in fact, next thing to be done is to do the same computation doing uncertainty quantification. So for example, multi-level Monte Carlo could help us, us to, to, to introduce uncertainty and to model that. And those are my conclusion comments. So the notion of weak solution for non-conservative system depends quite a lot on small scale. So you have neglected, but then you need to introduce that in your, in your model by setting your, your path. Path conservative is a tool for extending well-known solvers in the, to the framework of non-conservative. Convergence is hard for those kind of problems. But there are ways to improve that. Also, path conservative, we think that is a very natural way to define uh, well-balanced high-order scheme. And if you move to real-world application, then you need to, to concentrate also in the implementation. So HPC is, I would say, mandatory. And then, we do some uncertainty quantification, not for that problem. We have done with multi-level Monte Carlo and do a very good job for your physical flows. Something that we want to do is to concentrate the definition of well-balanced high-order numerical scheme for the, yes, for the solutions, you know, for balance lot of manifolds and so on. So thank you for your attention.